This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Yale Euro Profile cylinder that was sent to me by Nick Yeagers. He sent this lock to me after he had mentioned that he had a Yale cylinder that was filled with serrated pins. I've not encountered that in the past. I've only encountered spools in Yale cylinders, so I was really anxious to check it out and see how it picked. I was pleasantly surprised when the lock arrived because we had some really interesting bidding on here. And it doesn't look too bad, but really the crux of this lock is that number four slot. You can see a really low cut, and that entirely changes the way we pick this lock. Let me explain why. There's really two approaches I take to picking the pins in the Yale Y1 keyway. The first and by far the most common is I'll use bottom of the keyway tension and then use a normal shallow hook to pick off the right side warding. And that works in, I'll say 90% of the time. The other way is to use a medium hook with a relatively narrow tip. And what you do is you put it in the bottom of the keyway angled up to the right. And it's necessary to have that shallow tip because what you need to do is thread the holes drilled in the warding behind this piece of warding up here on the right side. And of course for that, you need to use top of the keyway tension. Now with respect to the particular bidding on this lock, when I first started picking it, I very quickly discovered that I could not slip my pick past this number four cut without oversetting it. So picking entirely from that right side warding was entirely out of the question. However, picking from the bottom is considerably harder. So what I sometimes will do is employ a hybrid method. Of course, we'll have to use top of the keyway tension, but I'll use the shallow hook for the front pins and then keep a medium hook for the back pins. So let's try that right now. I'm gonna start off in the front. Okay, click out a one, couple clicks actually. Click out a two and he went springy on me. Three is springy, and four, hmm. okay, got to click out of him. Let's make sure we got all these front pins set before we move to the back. I just hit one, went into a false set, nothing on two, three, little counter rotation, and now nothing from him, nothing on four. Let's get the medium hook and move to the back now. Okay, we're on number five. And got a, getting a little bit of movement there. There we go. And that's all I'm feeling from five and moving on to six. Little counter rotation and we got it open. Okay, interesting little pick. Let's take this guy apart and see what's inside. Okay, looks like we have a C-clip on the back of this that we will need to remove. Let's lock it back up. These bendy clips can be a pain in the butt to remove, but I just kind of pry them straight open and if they get too far out of whack, I'll replace them with a, with a steel clip that's actually springy and will be a lot easier to put on and take off in the future. Come on. There we go, that one's given me more trouble than usual. Okay, let's get a key and the follower and get this guy apart. Okay, lots of drill protection I see there on the core. Let's dump these key pins out. Okay, number one is serrated and it looks like it has a little shelf on it. 
I'm assuming that corresponds to some counter milling in the core. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Okay, it looks like all of these pins are the same with one serration up top. There we go. Let's arrange these and get the driver pins out. Okay, number one looks a lot like the GG serrated pins, maybe a little bit deeper though. Same on number two, three, same on four. I'm guessing this is what we have in the whole lock. Oh, number five. And six. Okay, that is what we have everywhere, and nothing else unusual inside of the lock body. Okay, let's take a look at this. I don't see any of that counter milling I was expecting. Okay, there it is, really deep down in there. I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, let's zoom in on this. Okay, as you can see on the key pins, each of them has one serration at the top and then a little bit of a shelf milled into it. Now you see that often in dimple locks as a method to ensure that the key pins don't drop too far into the keyway. When you see it on standard pin tumbler locks, it's usually there as an anti-bump method. And let's see if we can find we can see the counter milling that rests on. You can barely see it down there toward the bottom when you look at it at this angle. It's hard to see, but it is down there. So it's probably an anti-bump feature. Now moving up to the driver pins, they are all the same and they are all very deep serrations. They look a lot like the GG pins, but probably a little bit deeper. And it definitely made for a very tricky pick, certainly a lot harder than most of the Yales I've encountered. Again, on this core, six pins, we do have that counter milling in there, and then a ton of drill protection. You can see we have three pins in front of the first pin chamber, and then two anti-drill pins between slots two and three. Nothing else unusual there. Okay, Nick, thank you very much for sending this lock my way. To everyone else, if you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.